Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alchemisted, and this is once again Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. Last time, we blew up Bavat's secret base, which he wanted us to blow up for some reason, killing most of his personnel, as well as the ship that he... Best not to think of it. It was a foolish plan in retrospect, but now we're going to be facing against the ultimate Klingon. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Ultimate Klingon... Starfleet Medical has analyzed the reports of the attacks on civilian ships near the Klingon border, and they've noticed something. All of the materials that the Klingons and Gorn were stealing were medical supplies. We think they're working on some sort of project. We need you to go to the Corvet system in the Hiromi sector of the Pycanus sector block and meet with Chirurgeon Guy Petrel. He is one of the Federation's top medical researchers. He should be able to determine what the Klingons want with these supplies. Alright. Chirurgion. 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 Whichever. And uh, for this, you get Dibernium Reinforced Body Armor or Personal Repulsion Shields, which knock everybody away. It's kind of, it's kind of, like, it's kind of like the electrostatic thing in Bioshock, where you could put on like this plasmid that would knock everyone back if they did damage. Kind of like that. Except not really. So let's go ahead and accept this. Let's go ahead and make it my main, like I forgot to do last time, and I had to do it in front of the system, which kind of sucked. Not really. But it's best to keep it there anyways. Hell, whoa! Key dokey that was a little weird. Crossfire Tribble, just to make sure that I'm still going to have my RPG damage resistance bust. I would rather have the damage resistance than the damage output. I would rather have that survivability. That's just me. I tank. We all know I do. Let's go ahead and leave the ship interior and head for Corvette. And I'm beaming to my ship from my ship. That still bugs me. And here we are, we're still in the same place. From before. Let's go ahead and get moving. Let's go ahead and equip that. Hello. That's on. Probably fraps. Whoa, there is, there's that chugging again. It shouldn't be doing that. Corbett. Corbett, Corbett, Corbett. Oh, that's something I forgot to mention, wasn't it? Uh, somebody actually mentioned the uh, Ophidian Cane. Uh, whether or not they were going to be seeing that again. Yes and no. Uh, you will you will be seeing my bridge officers use it on occasion because I have all of, all of the hazard team equipped with them. But you won't see me using it because using it makes you a sitting duck post-season 4. Uh, it will get you killed. Oh god, I, I tried using it when I was doing exploration missions in the Betrayan Cluster and oh god... Because the thing is, this game is much—it's much more fast-paced now. So uh, you die really quickly, especially on missions like cloaked, in, like cutting the cord and cloaked intentions. You die fucking quickly in, in cutting the cord. You die ridiculously fast. Um, you die barely before. You die barely after the fight started. You're going. You've already gone down. It's really ridiculous, and uh, it's not fun at all anymore. The whole point of that mission was it was designed around you being a one-man army, and that's not the case anymore. Uh, that's that that's so far from the case now. That's so far from the way it is now. Uh, that that mission is busted now. Like like it isn't like it isn't technically like I'm not talking like in a technical term that it's busted. The mission functions fine. It functions the same way it did before. But it's just... It doesn't mesh with the new ground combat anymore. Uh, it was designed for you to be much stronger, 
and uh, have much more health and shields than you do now. And it's... Like, the design of the mission, not the mission itself, is broken now. Uh, does not work nearly as well as it did before. It was challenging before, but now it's... It's like playing... It's basically mythic. <laughs> it's myth. It's like playing on mythic mode now. So, I neglected to read the Briar Patch thing, so I'm going to go ahead and read the Corvette Colony thing. Corvette Colony was a site of negotiations between the Federation and the Klingon Empire in 2289. Although the talks to end the Cold War between the two powers were unsuccessful, they laid the groundwork for the more serious negotiations le years later after the destruction of the Klingon Moon Praxis, which happened in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country. Damn it. Why do I know that? Let's go ahead and patrol Corvette. I think that's like a Nausicaan station. A Nausicaan? Nausicaan. It's a Son Sean Connery station. The facility is not responding to our hails, Captain. I expect that the Gorn ships in the system might have something to do with the communications problems, sir. We should secure the system and then send an away team to investigate. Alright. You're closest, so you die first. Told ya. Okay. Your turn. Go down. Go down, I want to scan this. Thank you. Oh, he didn't leave anything for me. Bastard. Captain, we are within transporter range. The away team is awaiting your orders. Uh, that's the hazard team now, not the away team. There's a difference. Market difference. <sighs> you know, for a mission called the Ultimate Klingon, we're not going to be seeing very many Ultimate Klingons. You'll see what I mean later. It feels like the new loading screens take longer, doesn't it? I'm picking up Klingon and Gorn life signs, sir, as well as signs of disruptor fire. Prepare for combat. All right, all right, all right. Easy. But uh, here's more Gorns, is so if you're grinding the Gorn accolade, this is a good place to do it. And uh, those of you with a sharp ear probably heard somebody using the Ophidian Cane behind me. That was probably either Lima or Revan. Those two seem to be the ones who do it the most. Oh, they just... 
buy whatever computers they can afford, can't they? Ah, uh, somebody spilled their coffee on these. And no more Gorn, huh? Ow. I kick you for that. So, did that other guy drop anything? No, he did not. No siri biscuits. So, is there anything to do with these? I could, like, before I could have sworn there was something you had to do with these, because they just look like something, you know, important. I was like, oh, what are these? I haven't seen these before. I don't know what these are. What are these? But no. No. There's nothing to do with them. Would have been cool. Would be cool if they use like if they use these for like a future mission or something where you're having to go into like quarantine. A science oriented mission, you know, for science officers and people who are interested in sciencey things. Not me, because I'm a tactical officer. I'm The most I know about science is how to field strip a phaser. Kick him. That's right. Oh, God. Discard the triple. He will survive. I don't have to worry about that triple survival here. It's not about to blow up. Chirurgeon? Chirurgeon? Correct pronunciation, somebody. Chirurgeon? Chirurgeon? I worked... I used to... I worked in a hospital once. We never used that fucking word for anything, so... Like, even having... Even having worked in a hospital, I never heard that particular name uttered. That particular description. Oh, crap. Ah. Pran giving him a face full of Sub Zero. How does a, how does a Sub Zero laser work? That's like Mr. Freeze from Batman Returns level weird. Lasers that cool a suit? What? I don't I don't understand. Pran giving them a little bit of his boot heels. Okay, hang on a second. Sorry, I just had to check on something. I believe we continue this. Wow, those are clearer. I I I noticed it before, but I never but it didn't really dawn on me how much more clear those are now from the map. They have like this bold black outline. I kick you for that. Did I hear... I thought I heard a TOS era phaser for a second. Nobody has those. Captain Chev. Hey, have we met before? You seem familiar. Quit running away. I have come in war to kick your ass. Oh, and he get he dropped me a triple. Defiant to the end. You have fought bravely. Here is an ecological menace. <laughs> Bring out the shotgun.
Oh, I can just see a wall of text coming. That's a nice that's a nice belt. I like his equipment belt. Tactical officers don't really get that much stuff that looks that cool. In fact, the tactical kits, like I'll, I'll show I'll show you it. Hang on. Like here's the tactical kit I have right now. I have the visuals disabled. Enable the visuals. That's what it looks like. It doesn't really look anywhere near as cool as just like just a sort of belt and a few sensors, like a holographic display on your wrist. That looks cool. The tactical kits, no, no, not really. The first, like like the first. Like, the Mark 1 tactical kit looks fine, Mark 2 tactical kit, but the, the higher it goes, it just looks lame, and it cover and it completely covers up your, cus you know, your customized character, and it's like custom uniform and stuff, and I don't want it to cover up my custom uniform, I want it to look awesome with it, you know, I want it to make the, I want it to make my uniform look more awesome, so. Moving on, I can see a wall of text coming. Oh god, text. We are grateful for your assistance, Vice Admiral. What kind of research do you do here? My particular field of study is gerontology, the study of aging in various life forms. The Federation Science Council has given me permission to test various forms of genetic modification to find treatments for de degenerative diseases such as aromatic syndrome. We're making significant progress. That's significant because Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation eventually begins to suffer from aromatic syndrome. By this point uh, in time, he is living in his family's vineyard in Le Bar, France, and he has more or less lost his crap. Uh, for those of you who don't know what aromatic syndrome is, it's essentially space Alzheimer's. Bad, bad news. What did the Klingons want? The Klingon commander wanted to know about genetic modification. He was asking about the augmentation process, but that's been outlawed since the eugenic wars on Earth in the 20th century. Khan Noonien Singh and his kind caused the deaths of millions. <coughs> Excuse me. Tell me about augmentation. Essentially, the augmentation process genetically engineers a being to improve its capabilities. Augments are stronger, faster, and smarter than we are, but there are side effects. Augmented individuals have extremely heightened emotions, and they can be prone to murderous rages. Khan Noonien Singh and his ilk were responsible for millions of deaths. Who was Khan Noonien Singh? I don't need to know- I don't- I don't need this question answered. Most people who are playing Star Trek Online don't need this question answered. But for those of you who, who want to know, here it is. The humans were the first to experiment with augmentation, back in the 20th century. Within a few years, the augmented supermen were fighting non-augments. The eugenics wars destroyed great swaths of the planet and caused some 30 million deaths. Earth was plunged into a dark age. Khan Noonien Singh was the greatest of the augmented conquerors. He was the ruler of more than a quarter of Earth, and he treated the humans under his rule like slaves. Unlike some of the other supermen, Khan only enslaved his people. He didn't massacre them. I guess that would make him the best of the tyrants. When the humans rose up against the Augments, Khan and some of his people escaped into space. The crew of the USS Enterprise found them in suspended animation in 2267. Khan's battles against James C. Kirk are legendary. I've read an account of their fight in the Mutara Nebula, and it was thrilling. So what? I watched it. Uh -huh. I didn't need to read the book. I saw the movie. How would augmentation affect Klingons? The Klingons' previous experiments with the augmentation were disastrous, to say the least. In the 2150s, the Klingons attempted to use augment DNA to enhance their warriors. Those who didn't die from narrow breakdowns developed drastically altered personalities and physical changes that made them appear more human. Then a strain of Lavodian flu interacted with the DNA, and what was a terrible experiment became a horrible epidemic. The spread of the augment virus threatened the Klingons with extinction. Eventually, a way to stop the damage was found, but the Klingon DNA profile was irrevocably altered. It took the Klingons decades to recover, and to this day, those of us outside of the Empire aren't really sure how they did it. Foreshadowing. Remember this, this is important. What do you suggest we do next? If the Klingons are doing augmentation research, you've got to find out where they are doing this work and put a stop to it. The threat to the Alpha Quadrant is unimaginable. 
exit. Alright, we'll return to ship, but I just want to make sure. Is this the end? Are there any other corridors after this? No. Okay, we've cleared, we've cleared the facility. Just wanted to make sure. Message from the Wagalinde, sir. A Klingon vessel is approaching at high warp. I suggest we return to the ship.